The land of Punt, also called Pune, or Pune by the ancient Egyptians, was an old kingdom, a trading partner of Egypt. It was known for producing and exporting gold, aromatic resins, blackwood, ebony, ivory, and wild animals. The region is known from ancient Egyptian records of trade expeditions to it. Some biblical scholars have identified it with the biblical land of Put. At times Punt is referred to as Tarnetia, the land of the god. The exact location of Punt is still debated by historians. Most scholars today believe Punt was located to the southeast of Egypt, most likely in the coastal region of what is today Somalia, Djibouti, Eritrea, northeast Ethiopia and the Red Sea coast of Sudan. However, some scholars point instead to a range of ancient inscriptions which locate Punt in the Arabian Peninsula. It is also possible that the territory covered both the Horn of Africa and southern Arabia. Egyptian Expeditions to Punt The earliest recorded Egyptian expedition to Punt was organized by Pharaoh Sahuri of the Fifth Dynasty. However, gold from Punt is recorded as having been in Egypt as early as the time of Pharaoh Khufu of the Fourth Dynasty. Subsequently, there were more expeditions to Punt in the 6th, 11th, 12th and 18th dynasties of Egypt. In the 12th dynasty, trade with Punt was celebrated in popular literature in the tale of the shipwrecked sailor. In the reign of Menchu Hotep III, an officer named Han Wu organized one or more voyages to Punt but it is uncertain whether he personally traveled on these expeditions. Trading missions of the 12th dynasty pharaohs Senesret I, Amenemhat II and Amenemhat IV had also successfully navigated their way to and from the mysterious land of Punt. In the 18th dynasty of Egypt, Hatshepsut built a Red Sea fleet to facilitate trade between the head of the Gulf of Akaba and points south as far as Punt to bring mortuary goods to Karnak in exchange for Nubian gold. Hatshepsut personally made the most famous ancient Egyptian expedition that sailed to Punt. During the reign of Queen Hatshepsut in the 15th century BC, ships regularly crossed the Red Sea in order to obtain bitumen, copper, carved amulets, naphtha and other goods transported overland and down the Dead Sea to a late at the head of the Gulf of Akaba where they were joined with frankincense and myrrh coming north both by sea and overland along trade routes through the mountains running north along the east coast of the Red Sea. A report of that five-ship voyage survives on reliefs in Hatshepsut's mortuary temple at Deir el-Bara. Throughout the temple texts, Hatshepsut maintains the fiction that her envoy, Chancellor Nehsi, who was mentioned as the head of the expedition, had traveled to Punt in order to extract tribute from the natives who admit their allegiance to the Egyptian pharaoh. In reality, Nessie's expedition was a simple trading mission to a land punt, which was by this time a well-established trading post. Moreover, Nessie's visit to Punt was not inordinately brave since he was accompanied by at least five shiploads of Egyptian marines and greeted warmly by the chief of Punt and his immediate family. The Puntites traded not only in their own produce of incense, ebony and short-horned cattle, but also in goods from other African states including gold, ivory and animal skins, according to the temple reliefs. The land of Punt was ruled at that time by King Parahu and Queen Ati. This well-illustrated expedition of Hatshepsut occurred in year 9 of the female pharaoh's reign with the blessing of the god Ammon, said by our men, the lord of the thrones of the two land. Come, come in peace my daughter, the graceful, who art in my heart, King Matkari, i.e., Hatshepsut, I will give thee punt, the whole of it, I will lead your soldiers by land and by water, on mysterious shores, which join the harbours of incense, they will take incense as much as they like. They will load their ships to the satisfaction of their hearts with trees of green, i.e., fresh, incense, and all the good things of the land. While the Egyptians were not particularly well versed in the hazards of sea travel, and the long voyage to Punt must have seemed something akin to a journey to the moon for present-day explorers, the rewards of obtaining frankincense 
Ebony and Myrrh clearly outweighed the risks. Hatshepsut's 18th dynasty successes, such as Thutmose III and Amenhotep III, also continued the Egyptian tradition of trading with Punt. The trade with Punt continued into the start of the 20th dynasty before terminating prior to the end of Egypt's new kingdom. Papyrus Harris I, a contemporary Egyptian document which detailed events that occurred in the reign of the early 20th dynasty King Ramesses III, includes an explicit description of an Egyptian expedition's return from Punt. They arrived safely at the desert country of Coptos. They moored in peace, carrying the goods they had brought. They, the goods, were loaded, in traveling overland, upon asses and upon men, being reloaded into vessels at the harbor of Coptos. They, the goods and the Puntites, were sent forward downstream, arriving in festivity, bringing tribute into the royal presence. After the end of the New Kingdom period, Punt became an unreal and fabulous land of myths and legends, Tarnetia. At times, the ancient Egyptians called Punt Tarnetia, meaning God's land. This referred to the fact that it was among the regions of the sun god, that is, the regions located in the direction of the sunrise. To the east of Egypt, these eastern regions' resources included products used in temples, notably incense. Older literature maintained that the label God's Land, when interpreted as Holy Land or Land of the Gods' Ancestors, meant that the ancient Egyptians viewed the land of Punt as their ancestral homeland. W. M. Flinders Petrie believed that the dynastic race came from or through Punt and E. A. Wallace Budge stated that Egyptian tradition of the dynastic period held that the aboriginal home of the Egyptians was Punt. The term was not only applied to Punt, located southeast of Egypt, but also to regions of Asia east and northeast of Egypt, such as Lebanon, which was the source of wood for temples. Queen ATI, shown in the reliefs of Hatshepsut, demonstrated advanced Stetopygia, associated though not limited to Khoisan people of eastern South Africa. It has been suggested that this may be evidence of the survival of Khoisan cultures since the Sangoan culture in northeastern Africa prior to the arrival of Khoisitic speaking cultures in the region. Location The majority opinion places Punt in eastern Africa, based on the fact that the products of Punt were abundantly found in the Horn of Africa but were less common or sometimes absent in Arabia. These products included gold and aromatic resins such as myrrh and ebony. The wild animals depicted in punt include giraffes, baboons, hippopotami, and leopards, says Richard Pankhurst. Punt has been identified with territory on both the Arabian and the Horn of Africa coasts. Consideration of the articles which the Egyptians obtained from Punt, notably gold and ivory, suggests, however, that these were primarily of African origin. This leads us to suppose that the term Punt probably applied more to African than Arabian territory. Some scholars disagree with this view and point to a range of ancient inscriptions which locate Punt in Arabia. Dimitri Meeks has written that texts locating Punt beyond doubt of the South are in the minority, but they are the only ones cited in the current consensus about the location of the country. Punt, we are told by the Egyptians, is situated, in relation to the Nile Valley, both to the north, in contact with the countries of the Near East of the Mediterranean area, and also to the east or southeast, while its furthest borders are far away to the south. Only the Arabian Peninsula satisfies all these indications. In 2010, a genetic study was conducted on the mummified remains of baboons that were brought back from Punt by the ancient Egyptians, led by a research team from the Egyptian Museum and the University of California. The scientists used oxygen isotope analysis to examine hairs from two baboon mummies that had been preserved in the British Museum. One of the baboons had distorted isotopic data, so the other's oxygen isotope values were compared to those of modern-day baboon specimens from regions of interest. The researchers found that the mummies most closely matched modern specimens seen in Eritrea and Ethiopia as opposed to those in neighboring Somalia.
with the Ethiopian specimens basically due west from Eritrea. The team did not have the opportunity to compare the mummies with baboons in Yemen. The scientists believed that such an analysis would yield similar results since, according to them, regional isotopic maps suggest that baboons in Yemen would closely resemble those in Somalia. Professor Domini, one of the lead researchers, concluded from this that, we think Punt is a sort of circumscribed region that includes eastern Ethiopia, Somalia and all of Eritrea. Older literature, Johannes Dumi Chen, Die Flotte einer Egyptischen Kunigen, Leipzig, 1868. Wilhelm Max Müller, Asien und Europa nach alt Egyptischen Denkmalern, Leipzig, 1893. Adolf Ehrman, Life in Ancient Egypt, London, 1894. Edouard Naval, Dear Elbara, In Egypt Exploration Fund, Memoirs 12, 13, 14, and 19, London, 1894 ASEQ. James Henry Breasted, A History of the Ancient Egyptians, New York, 1908.